little bit. Okay. A little bit. The moment I start talking or teaching, everybody and their brother want to come and bother me. We'll see. Or get loud all of a sudden. I'm in a small, uh, well, it's not a small cafe, but I'm inside of a uh, cafe. I really don't want to be bothered. Don't want to be bothered. But uh, the spirit has been, has been vexed, seeing a lot of uh, bug out doctrine resurfacing. Bug out doctrines. Let me go ahead and. Uh, Get started. <clears throat> My voice, I'll do the best I can. Shalom. Rakata Yahawa, Rakata Yahawa Shah. Rakata Yahawa, Rakata Yahawa Shah. Kong Halaimala, Yahawa, Bahashem, Yahawa Shah, Bahashem, Rakatadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahawa, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahawa Shah. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that is scattered abroad. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson defending the gospel. Defending the gospel. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into it. So I was watching um, several videos, but I know one of them is a few bug outs saying that the Most High did not deal directly with the Israelites coming out of the wilderness and being delivered out of um, ancient Egypt. But the Most High has always dealt with his people. Usually the angel of the Lord, but the Most High knows and deals directly with Israel as a nation. Let me see here. Let me go to. Um, I'm going to go to. One moment. Let's try this first. <clears throat> let's see here. Yeah, let's go here. Exodus three. Exodus 3, verse 13. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I am come unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, The God of your fathers have sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. I am, that's Yahweh. He is. He is the Most High. So the Most High deals with his servants, the prophets. That's the linkage to the citizens to the inhabitants of the earth. Let's go here. Verse 15. And God said, Moreover, unto Moses, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, have sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. So the Most High's link are the children of Israel. You got Elam walking by Elam, East Indians. The Most High is the link. The children of Israel is the link to the Most High on the earth.
So that's how the most the most high communicates with the earth through the Israelites, through the children of Israel. Let's go here to Amos 3. Amos 3. Yeah, he used the angel of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, but the Most High knows and deals with his inheritance, the Israelites. Amos 3. The book of Amos chapter 3, verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you. All caps, Yahweh. The Most High Spirit descends on the earth in a tabernacle before the children of Israel. Eyewitnesses unto his majesty, his power. Usually, Yahweh Shai, the angel of the Lord, yes. But also the Most High's presence descended upon a tabernacle before the children of Israel. Let's get this one. Amos 3, verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth, Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. That word, Lord, all caps. So the Most High directly himself has a liaison, if you will, with the inhabitants of the earth, a direct point of contact, Jacob, Israel. <clears throat> Let's go here. One moment. Let's go to um, Exodus 24 and 16. Exodus 24. Let's go to verse 15. And, Mo and Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. So the Lord moves in chariots which looks like flames of fire in a circular form of fire and smoke and Moses went up into the mount and a cloud covered the mount and the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai all caps Lord so here's where this is going there is a push right now to try to reinvigorate a doctrine that's dead or dying, this universal doctrine of Catholicism, which means universal. So when you see the right hand push the doctrine in its pure form, that raw honey, then the left hand is starting to get more aggressive, trying to peel back the heritage of the Israelites, to peel back the skin, which is a dark sand, or take away the word which is sown. So now the Israelites are being identified. Jacob is being identified as the Lord's man, the Lord's guy, Israel. And it's upsetting the elite, the global governing authority that that heritage and the birthright is due to Jacob, Israel. Let's read it again. And the glory, this is Exodus 24 and 16. And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud, a large chariot, the Lord is speaking directly to his people, Israel, through the head, Moses, and the sight of the glory of the and the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mount, in the eyes of the children of Israel. 
So now that glory is being shown, <coughs> voice is drying out. Now the fire that's emitting out of the children of Israel is the word that is devouring the enemies of Israel, the global international bankers and their minions like wicked Israelites helping to reinvigorate or strengthen a one-size worldwide universal doctrine. One size fits all, like the purple people eaters. No need, no need to call any names tonight, but we already know who the villains are or the culprits that are in bed with the beast. We already know. So the Lord is dealing with his people so now that the dev devouring fire is coming out of his elect that are teaching in these last days. Let's go here. Isaiah 60. Let's prove that. <laughs> Isaiah 60. The book of Isaiah 60, verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. So that light is a devouring fire fire, which is the glory or the essence of wisdom, the word. And it is devouring the enemies of the Lord. Spiritually right now, a consuming fire. Dealing with who? Israel. Directly through his spirit, which is Jehoshai. Arise, shine, for thy light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. The same glory that rose upon Moses, a devouring fire. But now it's being done through words of devouring fire. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Why? Because this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. So it's shining through the men of the Lord emanating wisdom, understanding, knowledge, which is the spirit of Yahweh. Did he not say, that I will be with you unto the ends of the world. Yes. Let's go here to um, Jeremiah 5. The book of Jeremiah chapter 5. Let's go to verse 14. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire and this people would, and it shall devour them. We're gonna take our time. Let's go back to Exodus 24. Exodus 24, see? So that devouring fire that descended upon Sinai, Moses is devouring the enemies of the Lord, consuming them. Let's go back. Exodus 24. Exodus 24, verse 17. The sight of the Lord and the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. See? So that word is being issued out. So the Lord is reviving his people through the word. So it is consuming the wicked, but at the same time, it is energizing his elect, strengthening them. Let's 
go here. One moment. Let's go to um let's go to Acts 20. The book of Acts chapter 20. Let's go to verse 27. And go to Paul. Acts 20 and 27. Let's read this. Brother Ron, men of valor. Psalms 146 and 5. Happy is he that had the God of Jacob for his help, whose help is in the Lord his God. All caps. So the Lord has direct representatives on the earth today. His linkage to the the inhabitants of the earth. Not just citizens, but inhabitants of the earth. So he has a direct link through Jacob. Acts 20 and 27. And he's going to save his people, the elect of Israel. But ultimately, all Israel is going to be delivered through the remnant. Acts 20 and 27. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God, the entire doctrine. Take ye therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Spirit hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. So this is the sacrifice of Yahawashai, the word. So this is a precious, valuable endeavor, the gospel, because it is, it is built up on his sacrifice, his suffering. So it's valuable, precious. But those that don't believe in the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai, they're showing that lack of belief through their actions, the fruit of their labor, because they're going against the doctrine of the lamb, his sacrifice. So they're showing that his blood is, is not valuable. It's in vain. One moment. So really what they're doing is taking for granted that sacrifice that Yahawashai made. Acts 20 and 29. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. So the blood, it provides a protective hedge around the Lord's people. The doctrine is what leads to deliverance, protection, salvation. So you have those that are sacrificing the Lord's people for a dollar, another day and another dollar. So these are those that are committing spiritual fornication or those that are committing idolatry because they're trusting in a system built on mammon. So what they're doing is forfeiting or discarding a spiritual sacrifice of the blood of the lamb and in return, or excuse me, in replace of that, they're getting mammon, payment, 501c3, rewards, gifts. So they are discarding the blood of the lamb for a physical, materialistic gift or reward, status, wealth, mammon, essentially idols. Let's read this. Yeah. Brother uh, Raising the Elect. Let's read that. Raising the Elect. It's um, Luke 4 and 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, 
and recovering of sight unto the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised. See? So the left hand is moving to keep the prison locked, which is really our mind. Remember, Yahweh Shai said what? Behold, I stand at the door. So while the spirit of Yahweh Shai is entering into the temple of that doorway or the gate of our mind, the left hand is moving to keep the chains of mental slavery locked, bound in our sins or bondage of the lust of the world, the lust of the eyes, mammon, status, position. So it keeps us in a mental state of bondage where it locks our conscience to the earthly. Let's get ready to close out. See, let's go here. Let's go to Ephesians 4 and 29. Ephesians 4 and 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So corrupt communication is deviating from what Yahweh Shai taught. What he taught is good. Matter of fact, let's go to um, Proverbs 4 and 2. Proverbs 4 and 2. The doctrine of life, the doctrine of salvation, the doctrine of immortality is what Yahweh Shai taught. Proverbs 4 and 1. Here ye children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. So the law is the doctrine of understanding, of Yahweh Shai. Let's let this go by. We're gonna go right back to um, Ephesians 4 and 29. Can't wait till the Lord set this place ablaze. It's vexing. Ephesians 4 and 29. Notice this. If some of you brothers are not the prophets, then I don't know who is. Yeah, that's a good point. The Lord is not going to let the wicked run free, doing all kinds of abominations, promoting pharmakia, witchcraft, bug out Israelites, promoting false doctrine, and not have a right hand made to reprove their thoughts. That's in um, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2. They were made to reprove our thoughts. So there is an elect right hand which is Yahweh Shai moving to his anointed ones on the earth today. That's why he said, I will be with you always, even to the ends of the world. Brother, raising the elect, John 4 and 34, Yahweh Shai saith unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. So part of that is that sacrifice of the of the lamb, the blood of the lamb, because that is what's opening the or giving the opportunity to come into this wisdom. Matter of fact, that's a seal being broken. Let's go back. Proverbs four verse three. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother, Yahweh Shai. He taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live. So this is the doctrine of life. Yahweh Shai, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither 
decline from the words of my mouth. See? So there is a dedicated few that are on the earth today, a, a little sanctuary following the Lamb in every turn, every direction, which is a straight and narrow pathway led by the instructions, by guidelines, parameters. A straight and narrow path, the straight gate. Why you think Revelation 14 said, and with him 144,000 that follow the Lamb whithersoever he goes, not deviating from the doctrine that he taught, believing in the sacrifice of Yahushua. Ephesians 4 and 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister unto the hearers. So we read what that is good, the doctrine of Yahushua in Proverbs 4 and 2. We read that. Let's look up the word corrupt. No, communication. We're going to look that word up. Communication comes from the Greek logos. It's concerning doctrine, expression, mental faculty, divine expression, account, cause. So it's concerning the doctrine. It's not talking about rough speech. We just read it. Doctrine. Ephesians 4 and 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. And the reason I went here is because the left hand is trying to prevent that day of redemption attempting to pluck out the Lord's sheep from out of his hand. That's why they're bringing forth more apostasy. Because remember, the, um, the wicked global elite, they consult with demons, dark spirits. Like, look, your time is short. Delay or prevent the elect from being sealed, which is really effortless it's it's vain because you cannot remove or delete or add to what the most high has already pre-calculated or measured out unto himself so really what we're seeing is a lot of delaying tactics of the building of the lord's third temple his elect coming together as lively stones through the spirit of Yahweh Shai, or temperate mortar. So they're trying to delay, disrupt, or impede the rebuilding of the Lord's temple. Romans 6 and 8. Now, if we be dead with Hamashiach, we believe that we also shall live with him. Yep, mortifying the members of our body. Lust, greed, covetousness, envy, pride, hatred, malice, unbelief, putting our backside unto the air for the beast to ravish us, ravish us by sprinkling us with gifts, rewards, mammon, committing spiritual fornication. So those that are mortifying the members of the flesh believe in the sacrifice of Yahushua, the blood of the Lamb, and are going to be exalted with him. Joint heirs of that inheritance of ruling over the nations, taking their land, taking their children and their women as a possession. Get ready to close this out. 
So grieving the Holy Spirit is deviating from the spirit of truth, pursuant to John 6 and 63. Damn, I almost said something. That woman see him talking, and she's gonna just go, ah, bah, 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 bah. Unbelievable. So the spirit of truth, not only not deviating from that spirit of truth, but living according to it. John 6 and 63. So I'm teaching the doctrine and living according to it. Ephesians 4 and 30 and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. See, so on the left hand, they know they have a short time. Let's speed this thing up. Let's pay the IU can't see more money. Let's pay more of the leaders. Maybe a $30 million reward, along with about 100 acres of land. You see, so that day of redemption is the day that Shai is going to take his bride, the captive daughter of Zion, his possession. Ephesians 4 and 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. So put on the fruits of the spirit. Envy, pride, hatred, wrath is all fruits of the devil. Stumbling blocks, deviating from Yahweh Shai is a stumbling block. Let's look up that word evil speaking in the Greek. It comes from the Greek blasphemia, bless. Blasphemia, blaspheme, vilify, railing, slander, destruction, injurious speech to another's good name. See, defiling the name Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai by perverting the gospel. Oh, I didn't know that was in there. Evil speaking injurious speech to another's good name, impious, reproachful speech, injurious to divine majesty. That's making filthy the garments of righteousness, the doctrine of salvation to the Lord's elect. Wow, dirty in the garments, in other words. Ephesians 4 and 32. And be ye kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Hamashiach's sake, hath forgiven you. See, so the, do the doctrine of salvation, it causes us to put on the garments of eternal life, which is, which is pure, clean, or sanctified untainted. It's not dirty. But living dirty, trying to catch me riding dirty, just had to get that out. Living dirty is the garments or the filth of the world. And we can't have one foot in the world and one foot putting on a white robe. That's bugged out. So riding dirty is wearing the garments of this world. And the center of debauchery, filth, is the daughter of Babylon, the great whore. Close out. Proverbs 24 and 19. Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious at the wicked. So we see these people grossing 150 million a year, or whatever the case may be. You see, wearing fancy garments and driving, you know, a quarter of a million dollar vehicles. And we think, you know, just 
we can get envious briefly. I was envious at the wicked. So we think in this temporary heaven that it, it, this is the way so we can get deceived by what we can see, ignoring what we can't see, the kingdom of promise, which is 100-fold of what we're seeing right here. But that comes with the gift of faith to be able to visualize or be visionaries of a kingdom that's promised that we cannot physically see, but it's in our heart or our mind. Proverbs 24 and 19, fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious at the wicked, for there shall no be, for there shall be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. So they're falling from prominence. They're falling from being the beacon of light for the world to follow. They're falling from that. Temporary rulership. My son, Proverbs 24 and 21. My son, fear thou. My son, fear thou the Lord and the King. I thought Yahushai was not in the Old Testament. See? So the key is following the Lamb and believing on his sacrifice. Proverbs 24 and 21. My son, fear thou the Lord and the King and meddle not with them that are given to change. Changing the path to salvation, which is grounded in the doctrine. So when we are grounded, then the doctrine has deeply penetrated our innermost depths or the reins of our heart, our mind. So we cannot be swayed. Brother, um, yeah, Brother Zahar, Yahawada, John 7 and 16. Yahawashai answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Beautiful. So Yahawashai is in agreement with the Most High, Yahawah. So we are married to the Most High through the word, the marriage vows. And that bridge back to him is through the bridegroom, Yahawashai. Proverbs 24 and 21, my son, fear thou the Lord and the King and meddle not with them that are given to change. I, you can't see, change doctrine about once every three months. They, they're pushing some new BS, something new that they made up or pulled out of their, the backside where they sit down and take a dump. They pull something new out. Total BS. Proverbs 24 and 22. See, this is where I wanted to get right here. Then we'll close out. See, so the destruction is near. Suddenly, in a moment. See, this is where I wanted to get. So the left hand of these elites consulting with dark demonic entities are getting counsel from these dark demonic entities. Time is short. We got to buy up some of these leaders so that we can prolong our kingdom, our rulership. You see, they know. They know their time is short. They know it. Proverbs 22, Proverbs 24 and 22. For their calamity shall rise suddenly. And who knoweth the ruin of them both? They know their time is short. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. 
for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, for he know he have a short time. So we gotta buy off some more leaders. We got a briefcase of $30 million ready to go to the next Negro, preferably of the tribe of Judah. Judah goes for a high price these days, especially when you know the doctrine, why? Because Judah is the head that drives the train of the Lord's people. Why you think I, you can't see, have many paid off leaders? Not by accident. So let's prolong our time of reign of terror by buying off Negroes that are willing to put their backside in the air and take a good ravishing from this beast system. Proverbs 24 and 22. For well, their calamity shall rise suddenly, and who knoweth the ruin of them both? Time is ticking. The doomsday clock, 90 days from mi uh, 90 seconds from midnight. So suddenly, so simultaneously, while the wicked, along with those following the wicked, are being destroyed, the elect that are preserved by the blood of the Lamb are going to be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. A hypersonic missile can strike suddenly. We're talking seven to ten minutes a submarine launch system. Let's read this close out. Well, I am through. Pray for me for strength. Let's read this. 1 Corinthians 15 and 51. Behold, I should... 1 Corinthians 15 and 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. So the Israelites are made to be immortal, immortals, gods, lords, rulers, starting with his elect. See, watch this, 1 Corinthians 15 and 52, in a moment, goes right back to Proverbs 24 and 22. In a moment when the wicked are being burned, judged, simultaneously, the elect are gonna be changed, taken through the fire, preserved from the said perils and the said judgments. 1 Corinthians 15 and 52 in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So that incorruption starts with being washed by the word, and going through a maturation process, maturing, growing or being cultivated in the word. See that? So the incorruption process starts with being spiritually born again by being immersed or baptized in this new doctrine, a new song. See, Brother Azan Ha'amah, Shalom beloved. And how about Hashem Yahawashai, Barakatha, Romans 11 and 4. But what saith the answer of God unto him? Speaking to Elijah. Romans 11 and 4. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. So there is an elect according to being pre-selected to receive the light of the glorious gospel and be preserved from the said perils. Romans 11 and 5. Even so then, 
at this present time. Also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace, a said measure that the Most High will not delete or add to, written in the book of life. Those are gonna receive new bodies. And the change has already started by putting off the filthy garments of the world. First Corinthians 15, but that change is gonna be fully blossomed or fully come into fruition. First Corinthians 15 and 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. A full-blown spiritual modification, new bodies. First Corinthians 15 and 53, for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So that starts with being instructed, being submissive, being meek, lowly, humble, because Yahweh Shai stands at the door. So we have to be open up to him, open up our mind to receive the engrafted word. Let's go here. Wisdom of Solomon. One. Wisdom of Solomon. One. Verse. Let's go to verse uh, 15. Wisdom of Solomon, 1, verse 15. For righteousness is immortal. That's the doctrine from the king of righteousness, Yahawashai or Malak Tazadah. We read that in, um, in uh, Proverbs 24. Wisdom of Solomon, 1 and 15. For righteousness is immortal, but ungodly men with their works and words called it to them. For when they thought to have it their friend, they consumed to naught and made a covenant with it because they are worthy to take part of it. So the Lord has the spirit of discipline on his anointed ones receiving the engrafted word, following after the king of righteousness, Yahweh Shai. One more. Proverbs 24, verse 21. My son, fear thou the Lord and the king, and meddle not with them that are given to change for their calamity shall rise suddenly and who knoweth the ruin of them both so without being covered by the garments of praise this new song there was no protection there was no hedge so these garments provide the armor why you think we read that in um Romans 15, that this doctrine is like a protective armor, the armor of light following the light bearer, Yahweh Shai. 1 Corinthians 15 and 53, for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So focusing on the spiritual promises, the spiritual gifts, it starts in the temple of our mind that Yahweh Shai is supping with us. Our conscience, putting off the worldly, the earthly, and donning the spiritual robes. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. 
so we can get the victory through the Lamb. Our blood sacrifice the way back to the Heavenly Father. Sticking with his doctrine, eating his flesh, and drinking his blood. So putting on the full stripes, affliction, and walk, tedious walk, that Yahweh Shai engaged in. The full doctrine, which comes with suffering. I am through blue. So I tried to, um, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, make this as edifying as possible. So hopefully, this has been edifying through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Climb your Sharala and abide the bow. We got next, Lord willing. Barakatham. Shalom.